Hi everyone, welcome to our short demo of liquid text on Windows. Now, I want you to imagine that you're a honeybee researcher trying to understand why North America's honeybees have started acting strange. We've already loaded the documents that we're going to need, and so for step one, we'll go over to our document menu here and tap the little expand button, and we can see all the documents that we've loaded. Now, we're starting here on a bee afflicting disease research paper that talks about this new ailment and some of the symptoms. So the first thing that we'll do after this is we'll go to the workspace, tap the middle button here, and now we'll make a little text box. We'll draw a text box saying symptoms. We'll zoom this in a little bit, and then we'll go right over here to the document, hold our finger down for a moment, and then drag to select the most common symptoms of bee afflicting disease. We'll pull it out and connect it to our symptoms title here. Now, one of the things they note is that there's slower flight speed, reduced honey production, and a reddish purple coloring, but the slower flight speed has a figure associated with it. I'd like to see that figure and compare it to the text. So I'm gonna use two fingers and actually squeeze the document together like this. And as you can see, I can bring the text and the figure side by side so I can compare them and make sense of them together. Well, this is great. I'm gonna take this figure, hold my finger down for a moment, and then select the figure and pull it out into the workspace, just like this. Now for my next step, I wanna understand if there are any existing bee ailments that seem related to the symptoms of bee afflicting disease. So first though, I wanna uncollapse this document. So I'll go over to the little collapse indicator here and I can drag it down or up. And you see if I drag it up, then it uncollapses the document up so I can continue reading. But now let's go on. We'll go to our second document, Common Honeybee Disorders, and we'll load that up here. And so the next thing I'll do is I'll tap the middle button here again, create another little text box saying, saying related ailments. In this case though, we're actually gonna make this a bit bigger so that we can write some notes in it. So now as I start scrolling through the list of related honeybee ailments, I see tarditis. And that's interesting because I noticed tarditis talks about a change in flight speed just like bee afflicting disease. So I'm gonna take my pen and write a little note, speed. And now I'm gonna do something really amazing. I'm gonna draw a line connecting my document to my notes like this. And this is a live ink link. So as I move my workspace or my document, this line updates. And later on, I can always just tap this to get right back to the source again. Well, this is great. I'll go on a bit further looking for any other related ailments, and I don't see very much until I get to rubrum disease. Very interesting. Rubrum disease involves a color change, just like bee afflicting disease does. So I'll write a little note, color change, and again, I'll draw a line connecting them, just like this. So now I can simply go back and forth between these however I like. Well, this is great. Now I start reading a little bit about this issue with tarditis, but I'd really like to compare it to some of the symptoms of the color changing illness. And what was that again? Well, to find out, I'm gonna hold my finger down here on tarditis, and with my other finger, I'm gonna tap that little button by color change. And look what Liquitex does. It hold, keeps the part under tarditis in place while squeezing the text together to let me see rubrum disease at the same time. So the idea is, again, it's very easy to compare things in Liquitex. Well, this is great. But looking at these two together, I'm even more confused because tarditis is a bacterial infection, while rubrum disease is a viral illness. How could the bees possibly be catching both of those at the same time? The first thing that I think I wanna do is I wanna keep track of these two ailments because they may be important here. So I'll use my pen here and just select tarditis and then select rubrum disease and pull both of these out into the workspace but there isn't a whole lot here about rubrum disease. So I'm gonna, again, uncollapse the document. And I've actually found another text that talks a bit more about rubrum disease earlier. I'm gonna pull that out in here as well. And now I can see the two documents side by side just as easily as I can see two pages side by side. I discover that it says that both tarditis and rubrum disease can be spread by the gray mite. Well, that's a really huge connection, and Liquitex helped me find that, which is amazing. But how do I capture that connection? Well, what I'm gonna do again is use my pen and draw a line from this document into this document. Watch this. 
from this gray mite to that gray mite. And now it's created a live ink link crisscrossing between my different documents, just like this. So later on, if I lose this, I can always just tap this link again and Liquid Text reconstitutes the connection and brings me right back there. Well, this is great, but you know, I find I'm starting to run out of space a little bit here. So what I wanna do is pull my workspace into the second monitor that I have set up. So what I'll do is I'll use my mouse and just go over to the top button on the workspace bar here. And when I click it, the workspace will move out to my second monitor. Voila. Now, the first thing you'll notice that's really incredible is that that ink link we created is actually still live and still works and still accurate even across monitors. It's really incredible. But now that we have all this horizontal space, there's no need to have our windows stacked vertically. So I'll go tap the wide layout button over here on the left. And now the documents rearrange to a beautiful horizontal arrangement, never before possible in liquid text. Now I'd like to take some of these images that we have and pull these out into the workspace as well. So I'll scroll the workspace a bit and I'll take this diagram here from Tarditis, use my mouse, hold it down for a moment to select and pull it out. But the workspace is on a different monitor, but that's actually okay. Because what I'm gonna do is drag it from one monitor into the other. Look at that, it's absolutely incredible. Liquid Text gives you the equivalent of one large virtual surface, even if it's spread across multiple windows and multiple monitors. Now, likewise, we'll go to our poor red honeybee here, select him as well, and likewise, pull him right out into the workspace and connect him. Now back to our story. What we last saw was that the gray mite might very well be implicated in bee afflicting disease. So what we wanna do next is open this document about the gray mite. I've already loaded it, and so I'll just drag it out here and drop it right here. And terrific. We can see it beautifully in parallel with two of our other documents. The first thing I'll do is I'll just select the reference to the gray mite and pull this out into my workspace as well. And that'll be helpful just to have there. But the next thing I notice is gray mite is lethal to crickets. Well, I don't know if that'll be helpful, but why don't I pull it out and just keep track of it? So I'll connect these two together. Well, I don't really know what to do with it being lethal to crickets, but I noticed that there's a hive inspection sheet over here. Let me open it and see what we can find. So I'll select it, drag it out, and drop it in here. And I noticed something striking. It says that there were virtually no pests this year, not even any crickets, and that, that was very unusual. Let me pull this out as well. Well, now the story makes sense. It turns out that the gray mites were infecting our honeybees with tarditis and rubrum disease and stopping the crickets in the process. Now, as I share this with my colleagues, they might have some questions. And so, of course, I can just tap any of these links here to get right back to the source of each of these. This, again, is a short demo of Liquitext on Windows, coming soon.